Okay, so hello. So uh, the work that I will present you uh, today is entitled, mm, yeah, a DNA toolbox for engineering in vitro life-like life behaviors. So it's a work that uh, I am developing in KU University, and this is performed in collaboration uh, in the LIMS, that is a mixed institute in Tokyo University with the CNRS, and actually all the experimental work is performed uh, in, uh, in, Tokyo, in Tokyo University. So the purpose is to get inspired uh, by uh, a live system for designing, I would say, interesting uh, chemical systems. What is uh, very interesting is life when we are looking at all the mechanism uh, around the DNA is that we have a very complex and very interesting machinery that actually acts as a computer. All the genetic network that we have inside all our cells is a real complex uh, system that uh, will activate one gene there, inactivate another uh, gene there, so that uh, the cell knows what uh, compounds must be uh, built or not built. And so what we want to do and what we are doing is to get inspired by this kind of uh, networks to design much simpler systems. That is, we have some kind of DNA templates that are able to build messages, and these messages are smaller uh, DNA strands. But at the same time, these DNA strands will be able to interact with our templates so that we can have a dynamical system that will build or not build uh, uh, the messages. So what is necessary if you want to design such systems? That just we have to continue to get inspired by life and to understand what are the fundamentals of life. So what we first need is uh, a machine. I would say the hardware. So what we have is three enzymes. We take enzymes because they are the most powerful chemical hardwares that exist. And what we want is to have a dynamic system. And it means that we need, we have DNA polymerase and nicase, that is enzymes that will build uh, our network. But at the same time, we will need the exonuclease, that is, we must destroy. So if you remember uh, the talk that gave uh, Adepros on uh, Monday, it's very important to continuously destroy what you are building if you want, want to have a real dynamic system. So this will be our hardware. It's good to have a hardware, but if you want something to work, to function, it needs energy. So the energy is uh, activated nucleotides, NTPs. That means that our system, we have some uh, activated nucleotides. This machine will be able to use this energy to build something, other uh, short uh, oligonucleotides, and then these nucleotides are further destroyed. So we are maintaining a continuous flow of energy, a continuous flow of matter, so that in the middle, we maintain a pool of nucleotides. And this pool is not in the thermodynamic state, etc., or a kinetic state, but really it maintained uh, kinetic, uh, uh, dynamic kinetic stability states. And so we can have interesting stuff. And actually, we could ju just stop with these two parts. Th just that can really do very interesting stuff uh, on its own, but we want to do more. We, do, we want to be able to program a chemical system. It's really the idea to act as computer scientist, but on molecular level. So we want to input a program in this chemical system, and this program will be uh, this DNA template. So we input DNA templates. These DNA templates are protected to not be destroyed. They are just as written on an hard drive. These DNA templates are there, and they will, be, they will generate the dynamic of the system by just uh, fixing the topology of the reaction network. 
Okay, so this is a very simple, basic um, uh, way of uh, working. Oh, this is how, more precisely, uh, the module, uh, the, uh, each module in this system are uh, performed. So we have uh, a template. A template is in two parts. We have the place where we will read a message. So you have a short strand that gets uh, attached on this place. We are working at the temperature where the equilibrium can just go, uh, is, uh, by, just by equilibrium, you can just go on or leave it. The polymerase can start if and only if this is attached, so you can extend it. You have the case that is able to cut in a very specific place so that we generate back the message uh, 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 oligonucleotide and uh, we liberate a new oligonucleotide. And so just by choosing uh, the sequences of the template, we can read a message and uh, give uh, an output, uh, a specific output. And more, more interestingly, if the output is the same of the input, what you will obtain is an autocatalysis. So this first mechanism, this first module is able to provide uh, activation, positive feedbacks, but we also can have negative feedbacks. That is, we can have some uh, specific uh, uh, oligonucleotides that can just by in the middle and that have a non-matching uh, end so that the polymerase can't start. And so this uh, inhibitor will just block the activity of this template. And because we take it just longer, it will be more stable on it, and uh, so that the message really cannot uh, bind on it, and the inhibitor will, stay, will stop uh, the activity. So this is the theory. Can it work? Uh, OK. This is what we have uh, with simply implementing the autocatalytic uh, module. We put the autocatalytic uh, template in solution, and then we can just see that we have a very nice uh, autocatalytic uh, pattern, this uh, exponential, exponential growth. Because we are far from equilibrium, we do not have the kind of problem that you can have uh, typically in the von Kedrowski, von Kedrowski style uh, autocatalyst, this is really a nice first order autocatalysis. What we need, if uh, uh, we just have the autocatalytic template, we have accumulation, this is a gray curve, but if you destroy continuously, then you will reach a very stable uh, uh, steady state. And with the inhibition, so this is, uh, we can start, for example, with only an autocatalyst, we have a given quantity of uh, generated oligomer at a steady state. And if we input a little oil inhibitor, then we start to block until the moment where nothing is uh, obtained. We can really block specifically the activity of one template. So now that we have the modules, we can now try to really assemble a real complete uh, network. So what we did uh, is to design an oscillator. Oscillator are simple enough, but at the same time, generate quite complex uh, behavior. It's very difficult to obtain chemical oscillations. And so this is uh, this very simple framework. We have an autocatalysis, so alpha will just start to grow, but then we have a delayed inhibition so that uh, we have the growth of alpha, but alpha after a time just inhibit itself, so it, get, it goes down again, and we can generate uh, oscillations. So this work has been very recently published, and what you obtain with that, we can just first start by modeling the system so that we can optimize the conditions, and we just we can compute that we should obtain these kind of oscillations. Then we implement the system, that is, we just put these three uh, templates at a good concentration in the solution, and then it gives the similar oscillations. Of course, this can be 
optimize, the, uh, we can uh, just to show you that we can reproduce very precisely uh, the concentration of the oscillations. So we have really a perfect control of the system. And because we perfectly know what will be the kinetic of our modules, we can really start to play with it. That is, because we know uh, this kind of chemistry, we can build lots of modules, and we can just plug all these modules to generate lots of lots, uh, different kind of networks. So this is the oscillators. What you are working now, and that's working quite well, is just a B-stable system. And from this B-stable system, you can have some chemical switch. You put a compound A, then uh, you will uh, uh, we will form one uh, compound. You input another compound, then the chemical system switch to another uh, compound, and all this is uh, reversible. We can uh, build all the possible logical gates. So actually, our chemical computer is Turing complete, and we can do lots of fun stuff like band space filter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, with this uh, toolbox that we have, we really can complex lots of uh, 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 chemical networks. We can design what we want, and we, more interestingly, we have total control of it, so we can design it, model it on computer, optimize it, and then directly implement it uh, chemically. So these are all kinds uh, of uh, systems that we are working on it. So uh, we try to increase our oscillators, uh, to design logical gates, and with that we can really obtain Boolean networks, that is, we can really implement the equivalent of genetic networks. And we can do also other things. So we are now we have a simulation, a chemical simulation of predator prey system, for example. We are working to you. This is actually a drawback of the system. Except that it's very interesting in our context, I think, is that if you just have this machine working for several days and you do nothing, you don't even need to input some templates you unavoidably see the emergence of uh, parasitic uh, DNA replicators. Whatever happens, you can only see these replicators just emerge because we have this uh, dynamic system. And this actually was uh, uh, not totally new. It, it had been, there was a recent uh, publication explaining what was happening, if, except that uh, in this uh, uh, in uh, this uh, publication, it just sees this as uh, problem reactions, um, non-interesting reaction. But is there really interesting if we see that uh, as a DNA replicator? So I will just stop there. And if you have other uh, precision, just ask me. And thank you very much for your kind attention. So, questions?